So first of all, I want to say thank you to all of you for coming because you could have been anywhere in the world, but you decided to be here today with me. I want to say thank you to the Tomorrow Conference for organization. And the name of the lecture is NFT is here to stay, but bad art is not. I truly believe in this statement and I think it's very clear what I want to say because some of you know me, some don't, but I'm not an NFT guy, not a crypto guy, but I have sold some work in NFT and I'm very non-biased when it comes to art artworks in NFT, which means, at least I think it means, that I can give non-biased reactions about that kind of artwork. So first of all, who am I? My name is uh, Darko Markovic and I'm also known as Darmar. In last eight years, I have developed myself as a brand in art and design world. And what do I do to be specific? So I design, but it just happens to be that I design in 3D. Art is designed in 2D, 3D. I had the pleasure to develop different kind of technique where I cut the process while designing. And I'm known mostly for hard surface stuff. What is hard surface stuff? Well, hard surface stuff is anything from the pencil to the spaceship. I know it's very strange when I say that my work is designing spaceships, but it is the way it is. And I worked on some of the projects like for Sony, for Matrix 4. I worked on for with the Coldplay band. But what developed my name as a Dharma mostly is the, uh, the subject of Inside 44. And I will be talking about that in this lesson. It's my personal IP. It's last seven years I've been working on it. And it interconnects with NFT. It's like I had a feeling that something will appear in technology as NFT. Okay. So, today I want to talk about history a little bit, a brief history of art. And I think that history teaches us a lot of stuff. And when we go to the history, it repeats always in a cyclic way, which means that it can predict the future. And we all know the NFT hype that's happening currently, that artwork is sold for millions. But before the NFT, we had masters which were creating incredible artwork. And I took the liberty to put some of the artwork here that I think is iconic. You know, the Mona Lisa, of course. But there is also Ferrari, because Ferrari is such authentic art and it's very iconic. And there is also Darth Vader hel helmet. For me, maybe the most iconic artwork, if you analyze the market, you will very fast understand that this helmet is more known than Mona Lisa currently because there is a switch of uh, generations and younger people know it better than Mona Lisa. What all of this art have in common is that it was done by masters, true masters of their artwork. And it took years to craft their experience and to come to something like this. There was a lot of emotion, energy and everything. And then we came to 2020 and everything switched. And no, I'm not saying that this is not art because people always think that I'm going on a completely different side of the story. This is definitely artwork and I'm very liberal when it comes to it. For me, everything is an artwork. But is it a good artwork? I don't agree. And uh, th that's, that's just my opinion and I will take you through the history so we understand what creates a great artwork and what social, pol political, geologi geological and economical situations change the society, so we come to this. And this will give us prediction where we will go in the future. So, again, I took some liberty to position some artists, like producers, real artists like Leonardo da Vinci, Frida Kahlo, Zaha Hadid, but even James Gunn. And in throughout the history, the main thing that shaped art, and I can tell you that as an artist, uh, is critique. So, Critique is such an important element of any art. And in that moment when there is no critique or the critique is too harsh, the artwork starts to drop down. And all of these people had a very hard skin to accept the critique and to evolve on it. So technically, if we put the graph, it goes energy time invested in that kind of critique and we get the quality. This can be years, years of work. You are working all the time to produce your best artwork. Every artist knows that because it's such a struggle with mental state and everything. You're going up and down all the time. But that accumulates a lot of energy. And nobody said it better than Mr. Leonardo da Vinci himself. It's been said that on his deathbed, 2nd of May, 1519, he said, I have offended God and mankind because 
my work did not reach the quality it should have. Artists, and I worked with some of them that are very successful in this period, they put their whole life in this. If you want to be a successful artist before the NFT, you had to put your whole soul in it. This was unavoidable. So you're detaching a part of the soul. And he said it like this, and it truly is. And we all artists have one thing in common. And that one thing is that we all want to tell stories in one way or another. It's in our nature to tell you the story, whether through music, through painting, through movie, through anything that is art, we are trying to tell you the story. But what makes that successful story? I again took some liberty to analyze a little bit what interacts in all the professions of art, because they're, they're quite segmented. You know, the technique is different and so on, but all invest simple techniques that come to this. The number one would be time. This remote really doesn't like me. OK, the time. So it is not unusual that artists suffer from mental illnesses and stuff like that throughout the history when you analyze them from depression, from anxiety, and stuff like that. Because creating a great artwork takes a lot of time. But what kind of time? It's self-investigation. You're analyzing yourself, who you are. You're touching your soul and trying to find your purpose in your life. The more you analyze inside of yourself, the better artwork becomes during, throughout the time. Because literally that part of soul, as I already said, it needs to translate onto canvas and present who you are and people will react to it. The second thing, of course, is a technique. Different kind of techniques takes years to master. We need a lot of time to master them. But once we master the techniques, in every art career you will see that iconic artists would come to the conclusion that they can break it like a pro. So you'll use all the rules that you are le learning through years, and then you break them. They don't exist anymore, because you know how to bend them. The third thing is energy. Everything in life is energy. I am not going to go into spiritual descri description of it, but everything is energy. Everything translates. So you are literally translating that part of the soul onto canvas. And the more energy that has, and it comes from this time and investigation yourself, the better the artist story will be. And this is definitely something that all of NFTs are missing, currently 99.9% .9 of them, that they don't have art story at all. And third way, when your career explodes, it's always some new technology that happens, new way of creating art. For this era, it's NFT. But I'm not just talking about NFT and the way it's produced. I'm talking about new ways. For Leonardo da Vinci, it was fumato. For Van Gogh, it was painting m uh, the landscapes that were like planets. For uh, James Gunn specifically, his way was telling some very crazy stories in such an emotional way that you connect with people. It is always a new way there. But most important part of having a great art story for yourself as an artist to describe it is gatekeepers. The gatekeepers are people that give you that critique and they literally steer your career in which direction it's going to go. It's something that you, you just can't run away from. And throughout the year, we had multiple gatekeepers that were protecting the art. So most of them, most, most, <laughs> So if we look in a recent his history, the artist to become successful, he needed to open these gates where the gatekeepers are. Those are universities, exhibitions, uh, real art critics, art directors, and stuff like that. And the more gates you open, the bigger chance is that your art story will have a full circle, and you will become quite famous, and your art will explode eventually. And I will tell you that artists have a lot of problem with handling critique. It, it has always been as people we don't like when people tell us that something is bad. It's bad about for our ego, it's bad for mental state, but artists are constantly critiqued. When I was in university studying car design, uh, my professor told me, and I will remember that always, he said every time you put your artwork out there is literally like somebody throwing a tomato at your face in, a, in the middle century. They take and they, they punch you because People have different ideas about it, and they will always critic you. So you're opening gates throughout your career. And these gatekeepers, when you come to them, they are in multiple positions. They are there to tell you definitely this, and that is that you suck. And eventually, even if you come on a very high level, they will always tell you. In recent eras, there are art directors, producers, art managers, art schools. 
but they protect the quality of the art. You can't pass without them. And we are coming now to NFT. I know you're all waiting for me to start talking, and we need just a brief history. Okay. Okay. So technically, as a graph, it would be like this. Your career is pretty flat. My career, when I was developing, was very flat. I was very unrecognizable. But then when the 3D hit, and I won some competitions, my career started to skyrocket, literally over the night. It was a new technique. It was a blend of time, technique, energy, and the new way of technology where I implemented it, and that's when it exploded, literally. All of, the, all of a sudden, everybody was talking about the way I was doing stuff. But it was very, very flat line. It took years to get there. It's literally opening door by door. Many of you would argue with me that many artworks that are sold today are pretty crap. Does anybody of you know whose artwork is this? Anyone? Well, this is Pablo Picasso. And I took him as an example, and it's a prime example for me. Many say that his cub cubism is not something impressive. If you didn't know, Mr. Pablo Picasso was in top five artists in the world before he invented cubism, which meant a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of technique implemented to get this Artwork is pretty dope. It's very crafty. If you could see it, I don't know how you can see it from here, but the moves and techniques, it's incredible. His style is, is out of this world. And then new technology appeared for him or the new way. We got cubism. People also say cubism, okay, everybody can do it. Trust me, not everybody can do it. Now when you see it, everybody can do it. But we are all generals after the, the one battle. So this if you dissect it in a language of art, because people, under when they see something beautiful, they can understand it. But if you're educated in the art, you would understand that moves, lines, and everything here is on a very, very high level, and it translated from his art story onto this, where it was a full circle. So we are coming to NFT now. How did we remove art gatekeepers? It made perfect storm for crypto art to happen. We literally kicked them out. Well, a couple of things happened. First of all, for my luck, and I'm very happy that this happened, in 2014, digital art was for the first time finally accepted as is a real art. Artists are very biased when it comes to art. They don't like anything new. Everything is always, they like the way they did it before. It was traditional. Took 15 years for them to say digital art is art. And all of a sudden, we had my profession become a real art which meant a lot of new people popping. Second thing is that software that we all used, and in before that, software was quite expensive, but our little friend helped that, and the name of our little friend is Pirate Bay, and don't look me like that, I know you did it, I know. And uh, Pirate Bay made everybody use software, so uh, there, there was no reason not to use it. The third thing that happened was that my remote didn't work. Okay. The gatekeepers of digital art were art forums. And uh, if you have ever been on an art forum specifically, you would know that people used to talk with each other there, really talk. Like, you would have some really important people there under nicknames that would comment on your work and say, this is bad, we don't like this, give you input and so on. But the social media caught up very fast, so uh, like Facebook and Instagram. And... Uh, the things have switched quite a bit from there because social media, people only tell you that you're amazing. There is no in-between, like you're amazing. When you like something, you just send a fire and I wish Remote did this because it blew the moment. They just send you the fire. And the fourth thing that happened, motivational speakers came in, which meant big masses for them and they wanted to sell the courses. No, I'm not saying that courses are bad, not by any mean, more courses are amazing, but the problem with courses is that they didn't have legal rights and legal, the guys behind them that would tell them what they can do and they can't not. And that lowered quite the quality of many things because when you have university behind you, you can't say whatever you want. And here you can with courses and stuff like that. And COVID hit 2020, we are very aware of that. And when it hit, we were even more isolated. And if you have been on social media, and I'm sure you have been, you will know that smart people are quite outnumbered on social media, so it's not possible. You can send a fire or say that something is amazing. If you critique something, no matter who you are, the masses will step completely over you, because logic has left the building a long time ago. And this is maybe the most important thing with crypto art, why it exploded. 
I never in my life saw this good bear branding marketing. Never in my life. I mean, crypto art. We all know somebody who got rich from crypto. Art is abstract. It's the first time in history that art is literally called money art and it smells on money. This is the first time ever in history, which attracts, of course, a lot of people who want it. And that is completely normal. And when that happened, gatekeepers were completely removed. We lost the middleman completely. Like, they just jumped over him. They didn't care if they had art education, nothing. Middleman, he, he could just stand and watch. And this can tell us and predict us the future, because this is, NFT was sold immensely in the beginning, but now it's starting to drop. It's just the curve of the market. It happens like that. This brief history and geopolitical things and economical can tell us and predict where the future of it will go. No, I will not tell you that NFT is everything because that wouldn't be normal for me. So I will go in a little bit and dissect it. What is NFT future for me? Money needs to spin always. There is no question about it. It spins and that's it. Every profession is there to spin the money. But people are leaving due to, due to the new possibilities that are not happening. It doesn't have any more a big impact, impact like it had before. And the money needs to spin, so we need to look at different directions where we can take it. The segment where it will happen is that art and technology will have to work together to keep the audience. But we are not talking anymore about art artwork that will cost millions. That's a very small se segment and stuff like that. We are talking about mass user interaction, mass user selling of the stuff. We are talking about something that everybody can do that already happened, but it needs to be regulated. So it's not the first time in history that gatekeepers are back. This has happened multiple times throughout the history because money comes where money is. New people want that money, but to keep the money, the quality needs to raise, which means the gatekeepers are coming back at the big door. And nobody can tell us this better than video games. So video games and crypto and our NFT art are both based on internet and they are growing there. When video games are growing, do I have any gamers here in this room? I'm supposed that there is a lot because we are all geeks, I suppose. So World of Warcraft, is anybody there that doesn't know what World of Warcraft is? Oh, you know, for sure. I've spent years, spent years. <laughs> Many people lost their lives, like my best friend. But World of Warcraft is maybe the most iconic game maybe the most iconic game that they ever existed. And it shows us where we can follow NFT, where it's going to go. Why? If s for something, NFT, uh, World of Warcraft is known. It's for the quality of artwork. It's in the insane level. This image is a literally like Master did it. It's different completely. But was it always like that? No, definitely it was not always like that. If you see first artworks of video games, it was horrible. It was horrible. Literally, with this kind of artwork in 2022, on the left, you can't enter any game studio because this is such a low level. And on the right, you can see how the video game looked, which meant that art was following the, the quality of the, of, the, of the system, how it was the technology. Because technology was low, they didn't need the real artists. They took some high school kids, which did it. But then they earned very a lot of money which meant we need gatekeepers back. And that meant, if you check what happened from 2000 to 2018, you will see such a tremendous jump in quality of art. I think that the imagery is self-explained, literally. The quality is three million times better than the first one because now you have gatekeepers back. They're educating artists how to produce work. They're educating market how to do work. Technology is leveling up. The games are on very higher level, which is allowing artwork to look really good. Because if technology is low, like it's happening with NFT now, you all saw the how, the, how, how some of the systems look. Like, for example, when they're talking in the conference room, it it's very low quality. It needs to rise. As it rises, the art quality also needs to rise with it. And that means that gatekeepers are coming back. I said already this, but I will repeat it. And when they come back, in video games, we saw a thing which is, which is happening, and that is that they opened multiple positions and multiple opportunities. Game art was the first art that entered the universities after 60 years of art, literally nothing before that. And now we have universities that have game art, which means we will have NFT art. I'm not sure still where there that will go because it needs to be regulated and needs to be summarized to be smaller. 
but they opened positions like that. We have indie games, we have real artists painting, we have them reinventing literally the wheel. The technology was completely reinvented because of this middleman, but we also have competitions. And I truly think that we will have art competitions in the future, like right? real art competitions. Because currently the technology is not allowing us to have art competitions. They're quite boring. I mean, looking at me painting for 12 hours, everybody would leave the room. And uh, it needs to be faster, and NFT will be able to provide that with VR set. We are already having Oculus and stuff like that. And how did this pay off to the video games that understood that the market is like that? Well, it increased from 3 billion to 160 billion, which is the fastest growing industry in the world, because they understood where they can take it. Which means that one thing is <laughs> for certain for NFT, video games don't turn money from selling the video game. They earn from customization. The, when you buy a CD, or a CD, in which era do you live? When you buy a game, when you buy a game, you pay once. But with customization, it never ends. And people like to be cu custom. They people love. And games understood that, which means that NFT will understand that very fast and it's already going in that direction. But we are not talking about customization just of digital art. We are talking about real life customization, that everything will be s uh, customizable. And these are some of my predictions of this NFT art. Gatekeepers are back, which means it's pretty self-explanatory because I told you this 50 times during this lesson, uh, which means opening multiple positions, multiple professions, which means in-betweeners in the companies, market managers and so on, growing in that direction. Everyone will be unique for the first time in history, really. Like I'm talking about accessories and stuff like that because the market still, still we can buy different clothing, but s everything is pretty similar, you know, if you ask me. Brands will have to adapt. Everyone is an artist, but a regulated one. Interactive art will be main thing. Technology <coughs> will let users tell much bigger stories, and quality will increase pretty high. That's self-explanatory. So, customization of the future. People like to be different. It's completely normal. If you look at a photo, we really come in different shapes, sizes, colors, everything. And that is the beauty of for the NFT, because for the first time in history, you will really be able to be whatever you want. And we are not talking about digital. We are talking also about real life. I follow technology closely because it gives me inspiration where I can take my designs when I'm designing anything. And smart materials are coming. They are one step away, which means that I will be have customizable t-shirt that I will be able to sell. For example, she has this pattern, she will be able to sell that pattern to me. It will be completely customizable in real life as in Metaverse. Metaverse, it's expanding together. I guarantee you on that. And for first time you will have any, any industry of art customizable. Because brands are regulated. And what I mean by that, Brands have spent years, we told, talked about art story, to develop the design language, where it goes, what it does. Because, for example, uh, Ferrari, this will come to a shock to you probably because it was a very big shock for me. Uh, they went in so much design psychology that when a Ferrari passes next to you with their engine, it literally sounds like a horse running. And when the Lamborghini passes, it sounds like a bull running, it's much heavier. Jag, it's literally so it goes in such a, such a, such a level to do, do it like that. And I think that brands will have huge problems because customization, when it happens, everything is changing. They can't restrict what their design aesthetic is. And I think that the only thing that will stay is a logo, literally. Or there is different solution, maybe better one for them. They will have controlled markets for gatekeepers. And I think that they will these are possibilities to open new businesses, at least in my head, is where you will be controlling markets for bigger brands on what they can sell and what they cannot sell to other users. So they will have professional artists keeping the original brand and uh, controlling it how it looks. But on the other side, they will everybody will be a designer. So they will have to somehow control that market that you can't do whatever you please because it just doesn't work that you sell everything and anything all the time. Uh, 
there is a famous website called ArtStation, and I used to be in a board member of it. So you understand how, how dangerous any art can be. We like to be free, but it's very dangerous in many situations. And uh, this website, uh, we had uh, uh, we, w we had a meeting because uh, there was an, an image appeared on the website. The site is free to post, same as Instagram. It's regulated, but it takes time to erase stuff that shouldn't be there. It doesn't have pending that maybe it should have, I don't know. And uh, someone posted uh, China's uh, president as Winnie the Pooh. If you don't know, that's a huge insult to him. And site w uh, was blocked in a whole world for China in less than two minutes. If the market was regulated, that would never happen. That, but there are certain laws that still don't uh, let them that. So it's, it can be a huge problem because you can insult somebody with the artwork that maybe looks super normal to somebody and nothing special, but it insulted the whole country and it was blocked completely, which means the middleman has to re regulate that. And as I said, everybody will be artists, but a regulated one. So they will be regulating how you are selling it, to who you are selling it, uh, where you are going with that kind of customization. Uh, because that uh, gatekeepers, again, will need to level. We are talking about video games. If you played video games, level, uh, video games have levels on gold items, silver items, bronze items, which means the higher the level, the more it costs. And they need to regulate also that. What is a higher level item? What is a lower level item? And so on. And I think that the whole world, thanks to NFT and this blockchain technology, <coughs> because as I said in the beginning, everything is NFT and nothing is NFT. Uh, for the first time in history, we will have interactive art on such a high level that it will be amazing. I still don't like interactive art. When I go there, it doesn't emerge me completely. But my prediction is that uh, thanks to Mr. Elon Musk and his ideas of the world, we will be able to experience other people's emotions because the world is currently very unemotional and that's one of the reasons why it's suffering from depression, from anxiety, because we are trying to remove the emotions from the surface. As I said, everything is cool, we send a fire. But a uh, person has wide range of emotions. And for the first time in life, thanks to NFT blockchain and technology, we will be able to buy that emotions and experience them which means that you will, for the first time in your life, be able to experience other people's artwork and stuff, how it was created. I think that I wouldn't like to experience Van Gogh's creating creation of art, but maybe somebody else's, because I don't want to cut off my ear, but it's, it will be, emotions are everything in this world. They, they spin the world. And the most important thing is that uh, technology will let users tell much bigger stories. Uh, as I said, artists are all about the stories, and for the first time we will have stories told on a very high level. Imagine a Marvel movie done by just one person. And not only that, it will be completely customizable. Everybody will be able to tell it. And we will be part of that story. This is the part that scares me about NFT technology. And why does it scare me? When I mentioned social media and <laughs> that logic has left the building. I'm starting to experience that in real life. That, I mean, people always love to tell their way of the stories, how they, but certain stories are written in history. I think in the future, the stories will be able to adapt, which means we will be able literally to change from the main characters to clothing that they wear to anything that we like in these stories. But not just this, we will be able to tell stories on a different level, <laughs> we'll be able to tell stories on a different level where they change completely the path, whatever you like. And honestly, this, this scares me, almost as Mike Tyson, it scares me on this level because can you imagine that story is changing all the time and you don't know what the real story is? Everybody's saying the movie ended like this or this, but that's what NFT brings you, a lot of customization. And since we started with this with all, it's all about artist story, I will take last couple of minutes, okay, 10 minutes, to tell you what is my story. But I need to take you through so you understand what I talked about, the time, technique, uh, new way, and so on. And this is my art story, I will be very short. My art story is called Insight 44. I've been working on this for last uh, seven years. And I'm very precious about it because it's a whole IP, but to understand it, I need to emerge in the story because it's based on my real life as a Serbian. 
I will go very short and present this couple of years of my life, actually 35, even though I look like I'm 25, thank you. But um, I survived two wars. Actually, that's not true because I was in Belgrade in the First World War, uh, World War, in the First War, and it was happening next, but I experienced what happened with people here. You all know Yugoslavian War. The second thing that I experienced is bombing of uh, Belgrade. And unfortunately, that bombing of Belgrade, uh, after it, I developed type 1 diabetes. There is no strong connection that I developed it because of it, because the symptoms appeared throughout the months, but eventually I was cyborg because of that, and I have diabetes type 1, I'm connected, and I have insulin getting all the time. But I never gave up on life, and I always wanted to make something out of my life, which meant I wanted to be a designer. And trust me, when I said to my Serbian parents I wanted to be a designer, they weren't very happy with that decision but eventually they let me become but then the gatekeepers came and said that i suck pretty much uh, architecture university of belgrade and uh, fine arts said that i can leave the room because i don't have enough talent which made me very angry and sad at the same time and that's when my parents interfered they didn't want to let me stay on belgrade streets because they thought it would be problematic for me in that uh, period and they enrolled me in private university no no this is not private university like in the world here you pay to finish the university you literally pay to get the diploma on that kind of universities but i got stuck on this art i was in love i, I was emerged uh, it pulled me in and uh, eventually i got uh, i was the most awarded student of design for industrial here which led to Lamborghini scholarship in Milano. And <laughs> I thought that my career will explode for there, from there, but what happened is something very different. I wasn't very welcome to stay because of my passport, and all the Balkanic people know this. And I worked illegally uh, in Italy. I can't mention within the name of the companies, but if you ask me outside the door, I can, because I don't want this recorded. They, I worked for nine months illegally in some very big companies there, and they never gave me papers. And this led uh, to my health deteriorating completely, which meant spending a doctor's one year, they didn't know what's happening with me. They were saying depression, anxiety. It's not that I didn't have it, but I was losing balance. My liver wasn't looking good. It was, it was horrible, but even horrible more was that I lost it because of the job and everything. Very dark period of my life. And this led to me becoming very lonely and un unseen people leaving and so on, and that was happening in 2014, 15, something like that. But then I had incredible luck that I would go on alternative medicine and uh, would meet a lady which is called Dushica Milicevic. She's a real doctor, but she does uh, spiritual stuff, healing and stuff. And when I came there, I thought she was full of crap. But the results are speaking itself. I'm standing here, as you can see, my legs are working quite good now. And when I was having spiritual awakening, as I said in the beginning, there is a reason why artists have depression, anxiety, because they, they are looking for their soul. Inside 44 slowly started to emerge during that spiritual awakening. What do I want to do with my life? Well, two things. First of all, uh, I wanted to show everybody that diabetics can do whatever they want. Unfortunately, until I started doing that, the diabetes became a very normal thing, which is not cool anymore. Everybody has it. But the second thing that happened was that, uh, uh, that uh, I was very angry that I was tossed around as a Serbian. I mean, if you see me, I'm, uh, we always have people which are asking for bigger rules, bigger rights. And then I come as a Serbian and I look like a stereotypical person that shouldn't ask for their li rights, but it's a completely different story. I don't have any rights here and I'm quite stuck, not anymore because I expanded to the world. And I wanted to present Serbians in a good way. And that's when this started to happen. I started working on this story seven years ago. And I designed a whole universe based on my real life, Belgrade, and Serbia. Everything that you see here is not done by team. It's done by me. I worked 14 hours a day. These are all the characters. Of course, I'm the main character. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, everything is inspired by events that happened around me. And throughout that time, now that you heard the story and I emerged you in it, now I have three books. Each book is 210 pages. If you want to see, I have this ver uh, version zero. You can see it outside. I brought it with me. It's here. If anybody is interested to see the material inside, I will be glad to show it. Each is 200 pages. Inside 44 robots and vehicles. 
Inside 44 characters based on my friends and me. Inside 44 story. And each of them tells something new and fresh. And they present Serbia in a really good way because that was my point. Now when I told you the story, you, will, you can connect the dots how artist was inspired. Mars is uh, red, uh, Earth is blue. But red is Croatia, blue is Serbia in real life. No, I'm not telling a story where Croatians are bad because we used to be Yugoslavia and part of my family is Croatians. But you will see one more logic behind it because I think that the war was the biggest stupidity that ever happened on this. They all wear the same fucking armors, but they are different color, which is the same thing happening in the world. We are dividing for the color of our skin. What's happening there? I don't understand. You will see ru me running from the explosion. You will see me coming to the Rennes or the Italy becoming a race car driver there because it's much cooler in story than drawing, to be honest. Me racing in the story. And me having a huge crash. Because that's what happened there. And this is where I will cut the story short. If you're interested, you can ask me outside, but I'm not going to share on the lecture. And there is no cool story without the vehicles. That's absolutely, I had to have very cool stories, very cool vehicles in the story. But what the story was most about is about my friends, the moments I shared with them, because any art story comes from the connections and energy translation. I was very fortunate in my life to meet some very extraordinary people that became my friends and had very kind souls. And uh, they literally made me create this book, because, for example, one of the favorite characters to people is Tiny the Elephant. His name is Tiny. My friend will kill me that I'm telling you this story, but I have to do it. Uh, my friend has 2 meters and 120 kilos of muscle. And he has a, a girlfriend, not wife, but uh, she is 160. And uh, one night they were, they were arguing something, and uh, I, was, I, was, I was there, but uh, they were arguing so much that the noise in the, in the club, I could just hear one sentence all the time. It was, bug, 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 luck. That's all I heard. And then the night proceeded, and we were leaving the whole night. I'm hearing, bug, bug, bakalak, bug, bug, bakalak. And I leave, and I sit in my car with a friend of mine, and we are driving. And she says, I think I'm hearing them argue again, and I can hear bug, bug, bakalak. And as uh, the tram is passing, you know that the tram it uh, cl closes the sound and everything. <laughs> and as the tram was passing, it just moves and I hear, and I see them. And she is like, bug, bug, bakalak. And he's like, bug, bug, bakalak. And I'm like, well, I need to make him as a little dwarf elephant because he's afraid of her. And she shows him to sit and he doesn't want, and he has to sit because she told him. And he sits down. And I say to myself, okay, elephant afraid of the mouse. So I drive a friend home and I say, I will translate him as a tiny elephant. And I make him as a little dwarf elephant. And he has a stubborn character as my friend. And uh, it's one of the most inspirational characters to people. People really love him because it's that energy translation that I was talking about. We experience the same things. And there is so much energy in him from this friend of mine. And not only that, this can be customizable in NFT way in any kind of direction you would like. Because each character is designed in a way it has custom accessories and stuff like that. And it has a whole backstory. So technically, I'm telling their stories also. And for then, people would ask me a lot of times why I never quit, why did I work for 12 hours, because I, was, I will honestly tell you when this was happening, people thought I lost my mind when I started working on it. And nobody liked it, my parents especially, and they, my mother was, can you find a real job? And, uh, and, <laughs> and uh, eventually they all caught up. Not many people wanted to be in the story, but now everybody wants to be in the book. And that's one of the signs that it's doing really good. I never gave up because of my ancestors. I would always remember them. And if you didn't know, Serbia lost in the uh, First World War 75% of male population. And uh, I, what kind of man would I be to quit on a story if they had to lose so much to be here, to stand as a country still? So I developed story in a different manners where I want to represent some symbols of Serbia that are skewed and I don't like it because I honestly think that we are not bad people. I th think that we are very high quality people and I know that we have a lot of potential, but we are led in a bad way. I think that we need to be presented in a good way. So I will finish this lecture, lecture, lesson, lecture. Since NFT is here to stay, 
but bad art is not. And we will be telling our stories. Everybody will be able to tell it. What is your story? My name is Darko Markovic. Thank you for listening to me. <laughs> Does anybody have a question? Anything? What means 424? So um, when I was started to recover from everything and I had a spiritual awakening, I would see 44 number everywhere. And it was showing up on the cars, on the buildings, uh, everywhere. And I was like thinking, hmm, something is happening in me. And I said, I'm seeing 44 all the time. So for it's 44. But uh, I designed the logo. If you look at the logo, and I will go back. I designed the logo inside. It means it's happening inside of us. But two fours, two sides of personality. We have something that we show to the world and we don't. When they start to be integrated, we become the whole person. The second thing is that uh, normal blood sugar is 4.4 again. And the log also looks like you're driving on a highway, which is uh, literally my way of going through the life. I was driving and trying to find who I am. So that's why it's called Insight 44. Tough public. <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> the most the best presentation on whole event yeah thank you very much and really Dr really drink yeah. drink for me really really inspirational I story and thank you we'll take hey, a i need a beer from you yeah for sure anybody else please the gentleman with glasses the gentleman there so how are you sharing your story uh you said a book uh is it published um are you doing something in the metaverse? So the book is still not published. Uh, I have 10 more scenes because it's grew and grew. Two years ago, I was with Hollywood talking. They wanted to take it. When I say wanted, never happened. There were some huge problems there because um, they were discriminating me. I will be very honest. Not a whole Hollywood, but the people that were doing that. And then uh, I started to be very tired. From I had a burnout, so I had to stop. And that's where I returned and redesigned and recreated everything. And the book has that 50 more pages to finish. I have official soundtracks also, by the way, if I didn't tell you. And I will show you one more. It's good that you asked that question because I will show you what else I have. I have production of toys. I went so far that I have production of toys. I have <laughs> toys produced. You saw the car. This is the one of the first toys ever created. I mean, I can share it here. The wheels are missing because you will lose my wheels. I can't <laughs> give you like that, but, but, but I, I will be very angry because it's the first ever. Uh, my idea is I'm still touching the NFT and seeing where it can go. It gives me more freedom to tell the story because Hollywood is very restricted market. And politically, this doesn't suit them currently. So it's under a big question, would it happen? But maybe NFT will give me a possibility to tell it. Or a Kickstarter. I don't know. I'm still investigating. I'm open for posi uh, any proposal that you have, guys, anybody in the public. If you want to approach me, feel free. Even if you don't have a proposal, you can ask me or ask me normal. I, I, I'm very talkative. I think you can see. So I don't know where I will go with this because it's very open subject. For me, it was always Kickstarter in the beginning. But then NFT came and everything changed. And uh, I have no idea where what NFT is. I have no idea where it will go. So it's <laughs> that's the problem, you know. It's that's, the, that's the best place to be. So um, I, I hope your story uh, reaches the masses. Thank you so much. Thank you. Drink for you also. You need a microphone, sir. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> I have a question. Tell me. Uh, because nowadays a lot of people are dealing with mental uh, breakdowns. Okay. What would your tip be for those people? Mental breakdowns. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, so I don't give myself permission, but from my experience, this is just me. It's slowing down. It's definitely slowing down. I, I'm a very high uh, goal-oriented person. For me, that was a huge problem. I, I w when somebody runs at uh, 15 kilometers per hour, I run at 30. So it w that was what was making blockades in my head. Uh, Spiritual things happen, uh, help me a lot, but I'm afraid to say go there because I don't know who's on the other side. There is many frauds. I had four frauds before I came to who I came. And uh, 
you know, meditation is, for example, said all the time, do the meditation. And nobody tells you that meditation is a super dangerous thing, for example. It is, uh, if you don't have a master that's uh, leading you, you can get lost. I had serious problems with that. I would get lost in meditation. I wouldn't recommend to anybody because I was trying also to make high achieving goals there in meditation. Don't, you don't do it. Um, it's about slowing down and it's about uh, rediscovering what you want to do. And for rediscovering what you want to do, that's why I mentioned the meditation. It's patience. Patience and grounding yourself in the nature or stuff like that. And uh, I'm a strong believer, not in law of attraction, but in writing your thoughts. Because everything I wrote in my life, I swear it happened later. Like if I write, I don't know, I want a yellow car, to m I will have eventually a yellow car. It really happens like that. So, but I think it's just, it's not about attracting stuff because I'm a big hater of modern psychology. I will openly tell you all, maybe some of you won't like that I say that, but modern psychology has destroyed many lives, shine bright like a diamond and stuff like that. And um, uh, it's about knowing what you want. But to know what you want, you need patience and time to investigate who you are. That's, that's my advice. Slow down. Just slow down, ground yourself, and see, see what, uh, what doesn't work. For me, one of the biggest problems was not accepting my flaws and not accepting in what kind of situation I am. And many people have that problem, I think. But I'm not a doctor or a medical worker, so I even this that I said, I, I can't say that I'm strongly for it because I'm afraid that I don't say something bad and I put somebody in a in the direction should it. So sorry for my answer. If it's no problem. Thank you very much. No. Okay. We have three more minutes. Take my time, please. If no, you can ask me anything outside, whoever wants it. It's me. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, first, uh, thank you for, sto for sharing the story with us. Uh, it was sound so emotional. I think you need a lot of courage to share that story with the public. And I appreciate it because I have uh, so familiar things with you. And I need how tough you have to be to, to tell that story. And my question, because you mentioned so many times today about gatekeepers. Yes. According to you and your opinion, how we can find them in the future, how we can search them, how, uh, how you know, how it's very, I mean, it's up to you if you, let me say, how we can recognize them in the future. Okay, so that, that's the best way. So, uh, because gatekeepers are businessmen, they will find you. It's not that you, you, you will need them to pass. But the gatekeepers with the expertise, with authority, expertise. authority, and trust. Okay. <laughs> well, well, for me, it has been always easy because if you start working in art, you will see a lot of shit honestly because everybody is and you will you will start to it's by experience it's by experience but uh, i always let me think i always do three things in my head the first thing is i listen to person that i'm talking to i don't talk i listen to the person because they are telling me the story and i need to hear what they tell me people talk a lot of stuff but if you listen to them you'll understand they spin the same sentences all over the the liars are always the same always there there is it's just the universe the second thing is their portfolio and the third thing is how much they want to give you their time. And this is maybe the most important thing. Because in art industries, you have a lot of rude people. When I was developing my career and becoming, let's say, bigger name, uh, that is the fact that stand by me, the biggest name always gave me the most time. The, the some in-betweeners, they were always like, yeah, 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 see, yeah, I, I need to go. And uh, they always give you a lot of time, the people that are interested in your story. And that's maybe the most important rule for me in the business. It's hard to get to them, but once you stand in front of them, the big names always give you the most time. No, no, no don't give it to her. Okay. <laughs> um, so you, the story in itself, you've put a lot of effort. And from what you described, you don't really know where it's going. You do have the goal. Uh, do you have any lines that shouldn't be crossed? on your decision or if you're going to choose your path what are you taking in consideration to go for that path we are talking about economical side or that's up to you or that's the because question. i see two i see two sides that's Wha the question so are you focused on where the story is going to bring more profit or if it's going to reach the goal or so how do you drive yourself towards the path that okay. you're going to choose? The first thing that I always use, and I truly believe in that, is not injuring anybody throughout the debt profit the process. Profit anything. Profit we injure a lot of people. You will see that in our production all the time, that people are injured a lot. Uh, for me, I don't want to insult anybody. I don't want to push anybody down. 
I don't want them feeling bad and I don't want taking their part of the cake. So I'm looking for people that I can share this with. But when I sh say share, I don't mean like Hollywood when they offer me that I give them 70% of my earning. That's not gonna happen. So sorry, my blood sugar is ringing when I speak about that. And, and <laughs> perfect, perfect timing. And, <laughs> and, and <laughs> so, so we are talking about economic, if you're talking about the economical side, um, I'm very willing to give it for a cheaper price if there it will represent my country good. I'm very willing for that. And I'm not a politician here to tell you that, as a politicians always say, because that's one of the things that annoyed me here the most. Everybody is always, we need to do this, we need to do that. And then they come to the position and they steal half of the country. I mean, that's, not, that's why I became an artist. I would never be a good politician. They would shoot me along the way or something like that. I talk too much. And, uh, and uh, for me, the idea is representing the country good. The profit will come. I don't need to be a billionaire with it. I don't need to be a super millionaire. For me, it's about presenting the country, but in a right way and positioning it good because I'm not seeing other people do that. And I'm sure that NFT projects will allow countries to present themselves in a much better way than it was po possible before. Because before NFT, you had a lot of regulations. You can show this, 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 you can, show this, you can sh most of the things you can show. And with NFT, I think that the countries will be able to present themselves. That's one more of the things, and thank you for asking that. I think it will open a specter where we will be able to present our countries in a way that we wish to present them, not in a regulated market completely where they tell you what you are allowed to do. So that's it. Anybody else? What's your miskin? I'm sorry, the lesson is over. Thank you very much. <laughs> if anybody wants to ask me anything, feel free to approach me. I will take my time and answer any questions. <laughs>